I'm Andrew Lux, I'm a paediatric neurologist here at Bristol and I've been involved with infantile spasms for many years. I did my PhD on it and have been involved with the United Kingdom Infantile Spasm Study and the International Collaborative Infantile Spasm Study. So infantile spasms is one of the syndromes of epilepsy that occurs in infants um, anywhere between the age of a month and two years really, but with a peak around four to seven months. Typically a child presents with funny crunching movements of the abdomen or other movements lasting one or two seconds, um, but then quite often and more usually occurring in what I'd call a periodic fashion. So you might see a spasm movement and then maybe 15 seconds later a similar spasm movement. And quite often these spasm movements occur in a, in a fashion that I would describe as crescendo, decrescendo. So they might start off as being something quite subtle, maybe even just a sort of movement of the eyes in some cases, and then gradually build up to an, a more prominent movement, um, uh, and then gradually settling down again. And the whole of that might take many minutes. Um, there's quite a bit of variability. Sometimes the spasm might occur several seconds later. Maybe it might seem as though you're waiting more like a minute for the next spasm to occur. They often occur in the transition states between wake and sleep. So as a child is falling off to sleep or as a child is waking up, they may be, be precipitated by viruses and uh, not being well in general. Um, I think they're quite often misinterpreted as being something other than what they are, uh, because even though they are part of an epilepsy syndrome, quite often the movement's interpreted as being colic or a habit spasm or a tick. Um, and that's one of the big challenges when it comes to diagnosing the condition. The epilepsy syndrome would be where you've got a certain age of onset, a certain type of seizure or maybe combinations of seizures and a certain EEG pattern. Now the EEG is often referred to as being hypsarrhythmic and hypsarrhythmia is a very abnormal pattern with very high amplitude and lots of spikes in different parts of the brain at different times. Um, but not all children who have infantile spasms actually have hypsarrhythmia. And in fact, there can be some disagreement between people reading EGs about when it's hypsarrhythmia or something a bit subtler than hypsarrhythmia. So I think the important thing is to try and put all those things together. Our main reason for wanting to diagnose it in good time is that when we've done studies of groups of children who've had spasms, um, we find that those, the average uh, sort of developmental outcome, which might be assessed by means of something like IQ, the intelligence quotient, on average, on average it seems to be lower in those who've had the spasms for longer. If you get the diagnosis early, the chances are you can treat uh, effectively. Now, it's by no means all children with infantile spasms respond to treatment in terms of the spasm stopping, um, but most do. There is a concept of the epileptic encephalopathy, basically the idea that some forms of epilepsy cause so much disorder in the brain uh, that the longer it carries on, the more uh, the potential there is for permanent damage to be done. So what we would like to do is to get the treatments on board as soon as possible. The sort of symptoms you're seeing could well be other things as well. And, and of course babies do do lots of funny things, funny movements and funny behaviours at times. So we don't want to get people paranoid and over-concerned when it's not necessary. But on the other hand, I think if these events do look like they might be epileptic spasms, then I think it would be well worth getting a bit more information. If you noticing a pattern you think might be spasms, I would say capture one or more of the events on video as soon as you can, just for that very purpose of being able to explain it reliably. Um, uh, it's quite likely that the people you go to, because it's not a common condition, uh, in the first instance might not recognise it for what it is, and they too might need to do some research to find out whether they think the features are consistent with spasms or not. Um, in most district general hospitals there are paediatricians who have a degree of specialisation in epilepsy and that would be a good person to speak with. And if they can see the video, of course, that's a very quick way to do uh, a rough and ready assessment. Or there are paediatric neurologists in the children's hospitals, the tertiary referral centres for each particular region. And if you can somehow get that information to them, then you could have an, an initial assessment uh, of whether these are likely to be epileptic spasms.